So we can see 25 miles ahead at that altitude, the city. And all you can see is solid smoke over that, um, over that uh, city. And I know to myself anyway, at first, the first few times, I said, I'm dead. Absolutely, I'm dead. There's no way in the face of God's earth I'm, I'm going to be able to get through that damn black. Because a, a good example was uh, uh, Berlin. 25 miles ahead, and then you're, you're over the city. And anytime you're over enemy territory, maybe you're flying at 250 miles an hour or whatever, it seems like you're standing still. The damn plane's not moving. And that flak is coming up one after another, flying all over the sky, you know. And you come sense so there's no way in hell you're going to get through, you're not only get through this, but through, through more and more and more of it. You gotta go down, you know. So anyway, but at least, uh, like I think one of our, one of our roughest raids, we didn't get a scratch, but we were hitting Brunswick, Brunswick, Germany. It was a well-covered city, and it was um, uh, the fighter groups that were there to protect it, Germans. Uh, they were known as the um, the battling bastards of Brunswick, because for whatever reason they were they were aces. Anyway, we're, we're about 10 minutes off the target. On our way back, nice clear sky here, mostly anyway. And then somebody calls out bandits at 12 o'clock high. And the bastards, sometimes we, whenever they, they could, they get, they get up about 1,000 feet above you, 500 feet above you, and way ahead of you, and with the sun to their back. Now, so if you're looking at them right into the sun, you can't see anything, absolutely nothing. But then when, when, their, when their cannon shells go off, you can see the flashes of their, the cannons out of the wings. You know, shoot. They come at us. The, 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 the guys who were flying Coffin Corner, we, were flowing, we flew in squad groups of, of four, shaped like a diamond, a baseball diamond, you know. Coffin Corner was a, the guy in the tail end. They very often went after the tail, the tail plane for whatever reason, I don't know. Anyway, that poor bastard just disappeared. Totally disappeared. The, even the tail gunner, our tail gunner didn't, didn't know what the hell happened to him. And he's looking right down the throat, you know? Were you looking that direction? Huh? Were you looking in that direction? From your ball turret, yeah. did you see? Oh, I didn't, I didn't see what happened. But then with the tail gunner, he's looking mostly all back. Uh, with the ball turns, you cover the whole thing around. So you got to keep your, by, by rules, you got to keep your ball turret moving, you know, all the way around. Because uh, if you're looking in one direction, like let's say six o'clock level, right, there's nothing there, right, and you start swinging your turret around. Right? By, the time the, by the time you get back to that spot again, right, <laughs> you're, you're hit, they come out of nowhere. And they're fast, 400 miles an hour in those days, you know. So anyway, the, that, that guy, he went down. Now, our right, our right waist, uh, right, our right, uh, right wing um, uh, man, whatever you call him, they're, they're, they're coming at us again. And, and it was one of the most sickening sights I think I ever saw. Right alongside of us, right off our wingtip, they were flying. And they're coming at us. Well, they took some cannon shells, pilot and co-pilot, right straight in their faces. Excellent shots. The Both the pilot and co-pilot, because they were so close to us, and the both of them just slumped over the, the controls, just slumped over, and the plane was straight down to a dive. Now, they were all gone. See, because once you're going in a straight dive like that, you're, pin, you, you're, you're pinned up against where, whatever's there. And when you're pinned there, you can't move, you can't move a muscle. That centrifugal force. You can't move a muscle. So they automatically get, uh, get killed. The next time they attacked us, our left waist gunner, right? It's him, him and us left. Left waist gunner. They hit his uh, right inboard engine. Flaming like hell. He's right off our wing. And one of our gunners said, said uh, 
What the hell's the matter with him? Why doesn't he get away from us? He's liable to blow up any minute. Anyway, the thing, the thing kept burning, and the oil kept in the plane. Well, mainly because the pilot gives the orders. And when the pilot gives the orders to bail, you bail. And if that pilot doesn't give you the orders to bail out, you goddamn well better not, <laughs> better not bail out. But anyway, eventually they, they bailed out, and all of them got, um, uh, all of them got uh, taken, prisoners. But the, the one that got it right in the cockpit, they all, um, uh, they all got killed right away. And the tail end, tail end Charlie, what you used to call them, I think uh, they had three guys get killed. We found out later on that uh, that's what, uh, that's what happened to them. You know. But anyway, that was, uh, but, uh, oh, so I remember once in a while, every, in the course of the evenings after a mission, you know, or maybe a couple of, a couple of missions later, one or two of the guys will sit up in bed come back on mission, and they, they, they hold their hands up as if they're holding a, a, a pair of machine guns or one machine gun, right? And they yell their head off, right? Here they come, Johnny, watch them. 11 o'clock level, they're coming in. 10, ten of them are coming in. 4 o'clock level, this is how they holler. They holler at the top of the, the top of the hood. And a few guys would snicker a few seconds, you know, and the guy would just fall back to sleep. He was, well, he was asleep to begin with, you know, but he would just fall back and not open his mouth. Well, I used to think of this every once in a while. Well, when we were um, interned up in Sweden, uh, the, radio, uh, the radio gunner and the tail gunner and myself occupied one, one room. So I know uh, uh, um, John Paul Hadanowitz, his name was. Anyway, we're talking in a room about one thing or another, and uh, that that came up, you know, about the. <laughs> and everybody in plane called him Kelly because his name was so long, Adamowitz. And I would say, geez, you, you know, Kelly, what, what I always get a kick out of listening to these guys that were sitting up in the middle of the night yelling. <laughs> Kelly says, yeah, Mills, I know I threw more than one shoe at you. <laughs> but, I never dreamed that I, I never dreamed that I was one of them, you know, <laughs> because I wouldn't know just like the guys who were doing it. So you were asleep. The sound asleep, yeah. Yeah. And you holler, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's uh, that's a long time ago. What the hell? I got shot down over sixty-three years ago.